decorate and the items that are not well um, reusable uh, they are just working in the per particular context they wanted to to work and it just doesn't make sense to uh, to do, to just reuse this item in another context the biggest problem actually is uh, the code is less readable than it should be one bug for example uh, can be propagated in many places so the maintainability is also the problem here Hi and welcome to the Qt Talk program. We are talking about software development topics, in particular about C++, about Qt framework, about cross-platform development and about programming for embedded devices. My name is Lukas Kosinski. I am the CEO of SciStudio, Qt QML consulting company. We help our customers to achieve their objectives by providing them with skilled Qt developers. Today with me is Michał Woźniak. Michał is a software engineer here at Size Studio and also a team leader. He is specialized in Qt, QML, um, as well as C++. Hi, Michał. Hello, everyone. Okay, Michał, so let's start with the most difficult question. What do you do at Size Studio? So first of all, I'm a software developer, but I'm also a team leader uh, and Sometimes I manage some projects, uh, so I coordinate the contact with the client, I'm creating some tasks. I mostly care about the project to satisfy the client needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was the last project that you supervised? Um, last project I supervised, actually, I'm actually supervising two projects. Uh, so one is the uh, some kind of this uh, spine robotic surgery robot. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is very cool and uh, yeah in in this particular case uh, like I mentioned I'm mostly contacting the client uh, I'm in constant con contact with the developers uh, so I care about that to to make it uh, as good as possible okay and and the other one and the other one is actually the uh, mobile app to um, to search for the sky objects mostly for the stars. Uh, my role, roles are exactly the same as in the previous project. Okay. And yeah, uh, we agreed um, on the topic of this talk, of this episode to be how to create reusable QML items. And um, the question to you is, why are we actually talking about this? Is it like uh, people are making some common mistakes? Is it like it's a problem? Are there the things that are done incorrectly? Um, yeah, you're right. There are many uh, mistakes made by the developers, uh, specifically uh, by the and the beginning of their careers. Uh, I I noticed that many of the developers are creating a huge amount of codes, and instead of creating a uh, separate items, they are just uh, copying it, and it's it's not a good approach, especially in the big projects. Okay, what are the other common mistakes uh, than copying and pasting and just making more and more code that looks similar to it? It also includes some uh, some mistakes on the architecture mm -hmm. uh, level. Uh, some they create they create and the items that are not well um, reusable. Uh, they are just working in the per particular context they wanted to to work. And it just doesn't make sense to uh, to to just reuse this item in another context. So, um, what are those mistakes causing? Is it like they make the software less maintainable? Uh, is it like causing some uh, issues for another developers who are uh, working uh, on the on the very same code base in the future? So. Uh, in my opinion, the biggest mistake, the biggest problem actually is uh, the code is less readable than it should be. Uh, it's very hard to go through the code that has a lot of copy paste items. Uh, one bug, for example, uh, can be propagated in many places. So the maintainability is also the problem here. Mm -hmm. And that leads to losses in terms of time and resources, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Michał, maybe let's talk about 
making a decision whether a piece of QML code should be a QML item or not. Okay, uh, so at, at first I would create such a separate component when we're dealing with a huge amount of code with complex item uh, when we want to use those items in many places. Like, like what? Maybe just for instance. Like for instance, when uh, the most common way is to cre creating delegates for, for the list views uh, mm -hmm. as a separate items because uh, in many terms they are usually complex items that change uh, in, uh, in various uh, places and uh, we commonly use them across the app. Uh, so I would put uh, such delegates in a separate items. Mm -hmm. And uh, also thinking about the complex item items like maybe uh, some menus, menus, mm -hmm. uh, some navigation, uh, or maybe even if you want to create the item that uh, inherits from another item because we want some property to be uh, accessible in another uh, items. Okay, Michal, so when I am implementing my custom items, what are the concepts that I should follow? Uh, well, most of Qt KML developers, they know that they can uh, create properties and signals to additionally um, customize the, the items or just provide some values to them. Uh, but what are the main concepts, like the good practices for creating um, separated own QML items. So first of all, I would recommend uh, to remember about some existing items uh, based as a base type, like we have the items, cute objects, abstract buttons and controls. So as a developers, we are used to using uh, the uh, buttons and we know they have such a signal as a clicked. So that's a common, commonly used uh, signal, clicked. And if we want to create our own button, that better it's, it is used to use the, uh, the abstract button because it provides us such a signal, uh, like the clicked. Instead of uh, defining our own signal, someone could define the click. And then if you want to handle the click, it's, uh, it's a different handler. So that might be a misleading. Uh, we also have the, the sizing issue, I would say, uh, because when we are creating the separate component, we are we should probably mostly use the uh, implicit sizing, implicit width, implicit height, because it just gives you an overview of how the item looked at the beginning when we implemented that. And then we just specify the width and height uh, to our needs. So if I may interrupt you, so your first suggestion was to uh, use the templates and uh, basically extend the other existing objects just to reuse their APIs, right? Yes. Then, then the sizing, using the implicit uh, size, right? Yeah. The other thing I recommend uh, is putting the uh, complex logic or maybe something we don't want to expose outside the items in the private scope. So to do that, we just defined another item uh, inside that item. It is most likely the uh, cute object that mm -hmm. is uh, lightweight and mm -hmm. we have the functionalities inside that item. So uh, no one from the outside would access those functionalities and we can use it uh, freely um, in terms of the item context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I think that even in our um, company conventions, uh, there is a suggestion, like the strong one, to like implement uh, this kind of private cute object uh, whenever you have some properties that should not be accessible from the outside uh, of the item, right? Yeah, you're right. And uh, it also comes to my mind, uh, it is likely uh, a good practice to use alias, aliases instead of the another properties and just bind them to, to the item properties. It just reduces our memory usage. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, definitely. And uh, well, uh, speaking of those custom items, um, uh, how I should organize them? I mean, let's say that I have a set of UI controls. Let's say that I have a switch, I have a button, I have a, a text item. How I should organize um, the items of the similar purpose? 
To organize such items, I would recommend using the QML modules. They are very useful and uh, using them, we can just create a module and use, them, use it across the app. So just importing a single module, we'll have access to all of those controls. So we can even create some packages and uh, maybe share it with uh, other developers. So that really helps uh, managing the, the code. Mm -hmm. And how do I make such modules right now? Maybe without much details. Okay, uh, so most likely we just we need uh, those items that we want to, to uh, include in the modules. That's the first thing, items. Yeah. Uh, we will, uh, it depends on the Qt version mm -hmm. right now. Um, in the Qt 5, we wanted to, to use the QML dir to define such items just in the QML context. QML dir was just a text file, right? Yeah, it was just a text file defining the, the items and their pur purpose uh, and the path as well. Uh, in the Qt 6, we, just, we now have the excellent uh, Qt macro that creates a, a module. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that one in CMake, right? Yeah, that one in CMake, because we are now going to the CMake instead of the QMake. And we can we even have a blog post about that. I'm not sure if I made a blog post out of it, but anyway, uh, dear cameraman, I have seen recently a funny uh, meme about uh, QMake and CMake, so please put it here now. Okay, so Michal, thanks a lot for talking with me. At your service. <laughs> uh, yeah, and dear listeners, dear viewers, um, I encourage you to follow the tips from Michal. Maybe one day we will list them in some kind of a blog post. And speaking of blog posts, we are posting a lot on our company's blog and there are a lot of technical blog post about C++ and uh, Qt, about QML. So I encourage you to visit our blog and take a look at posts that are published there. And yeah, uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, then hit that thumb up button, uh, subscribe, or if you are listening to us or some other platform, then do whatever you can uh, on that platform. Thanks a lot and see you in the another episode.